Hey, welcome. Got a few people online a little bit early. <clears throat> Glad to see you here. So I'm just getting everything set up. So please be patient with me. I'm going to go ahead and put this on Facebook Live also. So just take me a second to get that going. I don't know about you guys, but in Austin, Texas, it is hot. I mean, hot. <laughs> we don't mind hot all the time, but when it's consistently hot, it's time for me to get out of town. So I'm going to get started here in just a little bit. I'm just setting everything up, setting up the technology. Trying to get the Facebook Live going also. Okay, well, I showed that it's two o'clock. It's two o'clock. Let's get started. So hi, welcome. I'm Jean Norton and I'm a real estate investor. I've been investing in real estate for a number of years now. And I, uh, I'm not afraid to go outside of my home area to do my investing. And um, yeah, yeah, I've got some uh, scars to prove it, um, but I've got some successes. And, and today's topic is uh, a case study on uh, one of my Chicago properties, and it was one that was filled with mold, and it was kind of an interesting story um, because it was uh, sudden. Suddenly, the price was reduced. I made a lowball pre-auction bid offer. It, it was on one of the auction online auction houses, and then they came back to me uh, very nicely and said, "Oh, we forgot to disclose that there's mold." And I said, well, okay, let's knock another 12,000 off of it, thinking that it'd be a $10,000 mold remediation. So I just say 12. Um, and uh, they did. <laughs> so I was like, okay. Um, so, I mean, there's been a couple of times that I've been really surprised that, uh, you know, some of my pre auction bids have been accepted. Uh, those, I will admit, those days are kind of few and far between. Um, also, before I forget, uh, this platform <clears throat> works best with Chrome, and uh, you know I don't. I'm really paying attention to the expertise.tv platform. I'm not really paying attention to the to the um, Facebook Live, but uh, I recommend that you get on the expertise TV platform to see the actual presentation. So. <clears throat> um, so anyway, I uh, they came back to me, and not only had they accepted the the offer, they uh, said, "Oh, by the way, we need anybody that that uh, goes into the property to sign a, a release." Uh, speaking of the mold, and you know, there's you hear the horror stories about you know the mold homes and people getting sick, and it happens. I mean, people do get sick, and and there is um there is problems with mold especially in places like chicago and that's uh, where i've done a lot of my investing was in chicago um and also let me sorry to keep digressing but uh, let me just 
let you know that there is a panel on the side on the expertise platform where you can ask questions. And I will monitor that and try to get make sure that I answer all of your questions. And uh, yes, it is being recorded. And yes, you'll be able to watch the replay as long as you registered for the uh, for the for the um, the webinar. <clears throat> so if you are watching this on Facebook, I believe Facebook allows you to watch the recording um, in my group, in my real estate group. So. Uh, so um, please don't hesitate to ask questions. And uh, but this is the this is the property, a nice little pro nice property built fairly recently. I think you know one of that's one of the things that I that I look for when I'm looking at properties to buy is you know how when was it built and uh, even you know this was on the south side of Chicago, sort of towards the east, uh, to, closer to the lake, and it, it was. Uh, built, if I remember right, um, you know, 10, 20 years ago, uh, most of the Chicago properties that I come across have been built for, you know, 80 to 100 years ago. So I, I kind of felt good about this particular one, being that it was somewhat of a new build. And um, it looked nice, the comps look good, and I got it for a really, really good price. And, I, and I'll share all these numbers with you in just a little bit. So if you saw the, the um, you know the, the the landing page, you saw probably one of the one of the worst pictures, uh, and th these are some of the the pictures that uh, were taken before, and you know what surprised us the most was the amount of mold uh, on the different levels. This was a it, it had a basement. Which is where I expect to find mold. I will, you know, it's not uncommon to see mold in basements in Chicago anyway. Um, the first, this is on the first floor. There's mold all over on the first floor. Um, here's some more pictures. And what was really funny, uh, especially about when you look at this picture here, it says that it was winterized what had happened and the reason there was mold throughout this whole house was because a pipe broke somewhere between the first floor and the second floor so there was a basement a first floor and a second floor and between the, the first and second floor a pipe busted leaked it was the middle of winter so it probably probably froze too probably suffered some real damage um so it if it was winterized, they lied, or it didn't work, or they forgot to do something, or somebody turned it back on, or something happened where it was no longer officially winterized. And you can see uh, that uh, there was a lot of water damage too. And so it wasn't just the mold, it was water damage, and it was sitting there for a long time. Here's some more pictures. So we knew that um, we had quite a project on our hands and the contractor, uh, you know, the contractor I chose um, was somebody that uh, I had worked with before and she and her business partner at the time were having a falling out and she desperately wanted to make, make that up to me because the previous project, uh, the delays just went on, on unacceptably long. And so I selected her so that she could um, make it up to me. And with that, I was convinced that I was going to be able to handle this quickly. She assured me that she would be able to handle it quickly. And um, so I promised my lenders a six-month turnaround. And unfortunately, it did take a little, little bit longer than six months. Um, but I'll get, a, get into that in just a little bit. And again, if you have questions, please go ahead and type them. There's some more mold. I mean, I didn't, I never stepped in. I never saw the property live. I've never stepped a foot into the, into the, the place. My agent, my contractor, her workers, they, um, they had to brave it. I hope they wore gas masks, you know, but here's an example of even just mold spores <clears throat> just on the top even the top of the, I believe this was even the second floor. So when you get mold that's really this bad, it will 
just float around in the air and then attach wherever it wants to go. And so there's the basement. And you can see that there's water stains on the, um, on the ceiling where the basement is. More water stains. So this is a pretty massive project. Um, and I was actually delighted to get it as cheaply as I did. And my goal, my goal on this project was to clear a hundred thousand dollar profit on this. And it was kind of tight. Um, I mean, I did do it. I got, I did clear a hundred thousand dollars. I'll go over the financials with you. I was hoping to get more, but of course, you know, if you're really in real estate and a real estate investor, you're always hoping that, you know, it's, you, you never really make as much as you thought you would. Um, you just get, just get used to it. Um, so there's just another picture. Some more from in the basement. Here's where we started the, the demo work. Um, you know, they, they started attacking the, the drywall and removing it. So they had to clear out all of the contaminated drywall in all of the areas. And I hope they were wearing masks. Again, I, by the time I actually saw it, I did do it. I did take a trip to Chicago to, to actually uh, visit. I had several properties in there at the time. And so I did take a trip to visit all my properties. And uh, luckily the worst of this was gone by the time I got there. This is the, this is where the kitchen was supposed to be. Um, so they got they my contractor hired a professional mold remediator, and that is critical because you want a remediation company that will come in and warrant their work. I mean, I'm a real estate investor. I don't want anybody to come back and sue me. You know, a little bit of mold in a, you know, in the basement, you know, you can cut it, you can cut away and you can scrub it down and you can use the the bleach and the, you know, whatever they they use, et cetera. And and um, but when it when it came to this level of mold, I really needed to hire this um, a mold remediation company. And I don't regret it. And I paid extra and I believe I chose this one due to the guarantee or the warranty and the warranty was 10 years as opposed to five years. So after they got it all cleaned up, they had to seal the unit itself and put in that ozone machine. And that had to run for several days. I mean, you really have to let that sit for a long time. So um, again, the mold itself was quite a challenge, but we still had to go ahead and do the regular renovation. So after several days of running those machines and you know nobody entering the property, we were able to go ahead and start to renovate the actual, the actual property. And here we're getting into some of the after pictures. Um, it turned out beautiful. I mean, they really did a good job. They got it all cleaned up. We didn't have to do uh, all of the flooring. We had to do the first floor. We had to redo the first, first floor. And in Chicago, you have to have hardwood floors. There's none of this, you know, vinyl plank or anything like that. <clears throat> it's got to be hardwood, especially for that level of a property. Um, this this was a property, this, a townhouse that sold for over $300,000. I think it was like three twenty nine. dollars Again, if you've got questions, um, I'm here to answer them. So this is the kitchen. Uh, they did a nice job with that, a nice open concept, uh, which is still really popular these days. Frankly, I, um, I don't like keep keeping my kitchen clean all the time. So the open concept is well, it's popular, and I guess you just have to keep it clean all the time. That's probably a good thing. But there are times like Thanksgiving. I'm glad I don't have the open concept because <laughs> I usually host Thanksgiving at my house. 
here's the bathroom and a bedroom. And there's the, the kitchen with the fireplace. And this was something that we were doing in Chicago a lot was tiling the fireplace. I don't know if it, if, I don't know, I don't remember what was underneath, but we used a different tile. Uh, again, the can lights. Another picture of the, the kitchen living area. It turned out to be just a really beautiful property. Um, so, you know, you, you've seen, you know, you've seen what, you know, what it started out as. And you can see how beautiful it ended up. And it was on the market like 24 hours and I got an offer. Um, can't remember why that offer fell through, but there was already a backup offer. And in fact, the backup offer was so high, they wouldn't even tell me what the offer was. They just knew that the offer was so high that it would cause them trouble getting financing, et cetera, et cetera. But I did accept the backup offer and it did close. And I did, I did make my um, $100,000, although it was tough. I will have to tell you a um, couple of problems like getting the appliances stolen and what else happened? Then there was a, I guess they turned the water onto the unit and the bat and the basement got flooded again. And um, yeah, there's just one thing after another and it, it happens. These things happen. I don't know if you can see this very well, but yeah, the property sold for $329,000. Um, construction was just under $80,000, which is really pretty good for Chicago, especially for that size of a house. And knowing that there was about ten thousand, ten to I think it was about ten thousand dollars for the mold remediation, uh, I did have to pay you know the HOA fees during that time. Um, you know my purchase price was sixty six one fifty. I had to pay property taxes, and yes, I did travel, and so some of that that I did take some of my travel expenses and and put it towards that particular property, even though I saw several properties, um, the utilities. Uh, and the inter the interest ex interest expense homeowners association um, the closing costs I had to pay my investor twenty six thousand dollars twenty seven thousand dollars and there you go I barely made it I barely made the hundred thousand dollars even with all of the other problems um, so uh, you know this is an example of you know, don't let things like mold scare you away. You really want these ugly properties to be put to work for you. And, you know, I've got other property examples like this, where if you've got a property, if there's a property nobody else will touch, that is perfect. That's exactly what you want. Uh, one friend of mine says, you know, there's not one, there's not a problem that money can't solve. And, and this is an example of, of one of them. I know when we started with this property, um, the first problem was it, the electric was not even hooked up from the street. So I don't even know what happened with that. And I bought it in January. So it was in the middle of winter and it would, it would, it, it was too cold for the electric company to come out and take a look at the property and even to, to get it hooked up. So there, you know, it started out with delays. Um, oh, and I think this was the time that the shipping container shipyard in Los Angeles was on strike. So we had to wait for the cabinets to get in. Um, so the, there was just one problem after another, after another. Uh, and then of course getting the, it didn't help that somebody stole the appliances after I got them in there. And then it didn't help even more when we turned on the water and the basement got flooded again. And of course I thought, oh, okay, well, let me just file a claim with my insurance. Well, guess what? I didn't get insurance on that one. So yeah, um, you know, I, I, am, uh, I am humbly being totally transparent. I made some mistakes on this one, but I was very happy to finally get my goal of, um, a nice profit. So, um, 
so that's about it on the mold house. Uh, if there's any questions, go ahead and type them in here. And I'll just check quickly to see if there's anything that showed up on Facebook. Just a hello from Wilbert. Thank you, Wilbert. So, um, so I've got other projects like these. I uh, got a similar one uh, that was, I think it was in Port Charlotte, Florida, where nobody would buy it. And nobody would buy it because there was damage to the well equipment. And there are just some things that will scare people, just little things. And, and that was the biggest issue. Uh, it was uh, the well equipment, which was $5,000. There was, um, I updated the appliances and uh, a couple of just drywall repair and paint. It was all pretty, pretty easy to, to do. And uh, that one also sold really quickly. So, uh, you know, I guess the moral of the story is don't be afraid. Um, you know, don't be afraid of these Don't be afraid of this. I mean, it gets fixed. So, mold is gold. Any questions? Any discussions? No, oh, I think I got a question. Oh, um, well, it was a three bedroom. It was a three bedroom. Uh, and I can't remember the exact square footage, but, you know, it was probably, you know, at a 2,000 square feet or, or better. Uh, it was, um, the three bedrooms were upstairs. There was, we had thought about putting in a bedroom in the basement with a bathroom. And I think we just put in a, a half bath in the basement. We decided not to put in a bedroom because the comps wouldn't support it. So it would have cost extra money and it, we might've even been able to bring in extra, you know, revenue from it. But unless there's comps that support it, I'm, you know, I was hesitant to, to make that decision. So uh, it was a gorgeous property. So if there's any other questions, now's the time to ask. Otherwise it'll be probably one of my shortest presentations ever. Also, if there's anything that you want to see in the future, let me know. Uh, I've got all kinds of histories. So, well, all right, everyone. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you being here. And, and uh, if you ever want to talk mold or rehab issues or purchasing issues, I'm here. Uh, I'd love to be able to consult with you. Um, I also have a a great um, advocacy program, which I would love to have you can be part of the advocacy program. There's sometimes you just need somebody that you can trust that you can go to to say, hey, what about this or what about that? And, uh, and I've got that group. Um, so make an appointment to talk to me and we can see if you're a good fit for the group and where you are and how we can help. Um, the group's small enough, I actually do private private um, private sessions. And uh, let's see, how do I decide? Here's another question. How do I decide whether to, or not to go with a remediation company? When it was, it was that severe, because it was that severe, I went with a reme remediation company. Now you also need to know what your laws are in the area that you are renovating. So in Texas, I believe uh, 25 contiguous feet of mold requires by law remediation. Now, I don't know if people do that or not. Um, there's no real way of knowing. Um, but, um, you know, in Chicago, especially, mold is commonplace, especially for the foreclosures that I that I bought. They, um, you know, they, it gets cold, the pipes break the water comes out and then they're, you know, they've been left abandoned, especially in, in some of these um, harder hit areas, like in the south side of Chicago. 
So, you know, the, you know, I've done mold cleanup by other, by people who are experienced with mold remediation, maybe not certified uh, for mold remediation, but, you know, when you walk into a place and you see so much mold and you could probably tell that mold spores were flying all the way around, um, you know, then you go ahead and, and protect yourself and get a mold remediation company that has insurance that if something does go bad, that uh, you are still protected. So you need to protect yourself, especially in a big project like that. This was done a couple of years ago. Um, I wrote a blog post on it also. Uh, and um, actually one of the things that came up in the blog that, uh, that showed up about this uh, the blog post says, yes, they made a hundred thousand dollar profit on one deal. But, um, so this was a, this was also a learning lesson is I'm never going to have a hundred thousand dollars on the HUD, you know, cash to seller again, ever. Uh, this is what happens is, you know, first of all, um, once they see how much cash you're getting, all of the creepy crawlies come out of the woodwork. Um, the, uh, hard money lender, I mean, not to say that it was creepy crawly, but you know, I was glad to have a hard money lender, but I had already had the property under contract. It was supposed to close within the time frame, And I can't remember what happened. It may have been the flooding that caused it to, to delay or, or whatever, but it was like two weeks after the six months and he exercised his extension fee. He said there was plenty of money in there that he could charge his fee. Most hard money lenders that I know will work with me if I have a property under contract and it's a buyer that's well qualified and everybody knows it, you know, they'll be kind enough and not charge the penalties. Um, let's see what else happened. Oh, then the buyer itself wanted all of these other add-ons and the contractor said, sure, I could do that. Sure, I could do that. And come to find out, the contractor was talking to the buyer, thinking that the buyer would pay for these add-ons. But evidently, my attorney said no, that when my contractor says, oh, we can do this and we can do that, that means that she is your agent and meaning that you will pay for it. So I had to stop that little bit of information too, um, right then and there. I mean, I had to make sure that everybody knew this is it. This is as is. Um, now the title company, they were the ones that really irritated me the most because when they see six figures going to cash to seller, uh, they just had to get into the deal. They wanted to see every single receipt, every single, um, you know, every single, Every single receipt, they wanted to make sure that what was done was what was done. I should, probably should have given them the before pictures and maybe they would have believed me. But even when it came for the cash to be distributed, they held on to $30,000 of it because they wanted to, I don't know what they wanted, but they weren't going to give me, you know, they just wanted to make sure that everything was done correctly. Um, so the moral of the story is that if I do come across another high dollar profit property like this, I'm going to build in all kinds of whatever it takes, pay off my credit card, pay off, mm -hmm. you know, somebody, you know, whatever. I can order plenty of payments to be made out of the HUD from the title company just so that it doesn't say cash to seller a hundred thousand dollars because, you know, people aren't very kind when they see that you're making a lot of money and they're not. <laughs> so um, home warranty. Okay, so the next question uh, is about the home warranty. Uh, yeah, I usually put in my budget a home warranty for the for the buyer. So um, so yeah, I just put that in the budget most of the times, especially in Chicago, because they're FHA buyers, a lot of FHA buyers, and you want to offer them a home warranty. So, you know, at one point you say, well, gee, do I really need to buy them a home warranty since everything's brand new and I've got the receipts and everything's 
already got a manufacturer's warranty, but yeah, oftentimes I would buy a homeowner's warranty for the end buyer. Um, so, and Agna says that it was my risk, not theirs. It is my risk. You bet. I'm the one risking everything. I'm putting everything together. I'm the one that's directing. I place the orders. I manage the money. I issue the payments. I make the decisions. And, you know, even though I do everything the way I should, like putting it in the name of a trust, et cetera, et cetera, you know, um, people close to me and close to the project know who it is that's running the show. And it's me. I'm running the show. And so that's a, <laughs> and that, Agnes says, that's why you get the big bucks. Well, it would be nice if I could get those, these kind of projects at least once a year, but this one was a, was a, certainly um, a couple years ago. I could have, I could have used another one like that. So um, a homeowner's warranty is another question. What is a, what does the warranty entail? A homeowner's warranty is, is basically a warranty on the house itself. So I, I'll pay maybe $500 uh, for this homeowner's warranty. And it basically says if something breaks, all the user has to do, or all the buyer, the, the tenant, or not the tenant, but the, you know, the, the buyer has to do is just um, call their line and pay a flat fee, like $50, $60, and it gets fixed. So for example, if it's an air conditioner breaks um, and nobody expected that, then $60, and they'll get it fixed. So it's a low it's a low risk uh, for them to actually, you know, be able to go into a house and know that they're fairly safe. That like as soon as they dump hundreds of thousands of dollars, that things aren't going to start falling apart on them. So let's see. Anything else? Any other questions? I just told my son this morning who's now an adult, you know, he said, yeah, I'm doing a webinar on uh, the mold house where I made $100,000 profit. He said, you made $100,000 profit? He said, yeah, I did a few years ago. Well, where'd it go? <laughs> Certainly not in my college fund. <laughs> I was like, okay. So uh, he even said, I guess that's why you don't tell your kids how much money you make. And again, this is an example. You don't tell the title company how much money you make. You don't tell anybody how much money you make. You try to hide those expenses because they'll they'll come they'll come out they'll come after you. Jeez, that was a tough learning lesson. Here it was my, you know one of my proudest achievements, and having to learn that you know that it, it caught unwanted attention is what it was. Anyway, so are there any more questions? at all. And, uh, this was a great project, very frustrating. I don't know what I don't I don't know of any real estate project that isn't frustrating. Uh, but this this was frustrating. You know, there's, uh, you know, I've got a, a statement about Chicago, uh, either it's too cold to work, or it's too nice to work. So I have a hard time getting people to kind of work on quickly. But uh, that I think is something that happens everywhere. So let me just check on Facebook, see if there's anything new that that's there. A um, couple of highs. That's great. Thanks. So thanks for checking in. Thanks for, for watching. Uh, you know, and go to the expertise TV uh, site. I'll put the link below the recording. Um, for those of you that watch this on Facebook, and so that you can actually see the actual presentation. Uh, so, because those before pictures were pretty, pretty telling. Okay, how could I have hidden those costs? Okay, when you, when a, when a property goes to closing, you know, not only do you, you know, you, what's documented is what do I owe the hard money lender? So that's there. Uh, there's other things that are documented. Let's just say like um, a contractor may say, I'll do the work and I'll agree to get paid at closing. So you put his invoice in there, his or her invoice in there. Uh, then you can also, you can just instruct the title company 
to distribute the proceeds any way you want. So I might want to pay um, uh, my credit card bill. So I instruct them to pay, you know, pay down the balance of a credit card bill, or I'll even instruct them to pay another company that I might own um, in order to, to, to minimize what that cash to seller is. And these people at the title companies, you have to understand that they are not entrepreneurs. They follow directions. They have rules. They're not, they're not creative thinkers in general, because if they were, they'd be out there doing real estate investing like we are. Um, but, you know, and because with real estate investing, it's all about being creative and thinking outside of the box. But with the title companies, you know, they just see what's on, on the line. Okay, well, this amount of money has to go here. This amount of money has to go there. And then the cat and the cash to seller is $20,000, which is, an, you know, that's probably a more common amount that you might see, or, you know, anything under 50 is probably, you know, pretty much more common. Um, but you can tell the title company to pay whatever. And then when they see the cash to seller, it won't be a hundred thousand dollars. And then they won't get, you know, scared or nervous or think that there's something wrong or possibly, you know, not, not totally kosher going on. And for whatever reason, they decided to withhold $30,000, which of course really pissed me off. But, you know, um, we were able to, I can't remember what we did, but my attorney got involved and, and Illinois is an attorney state. So you normally have an attorney when you're doing a real estate transaction. But um, I was able to provide some information and my attorney got involved and, and freed it up. So, I mean, I probably, you know, I don't know how many deals. I've probably done 20 deals in Chicago alone and paid him for each and every one and, you know, shake my head saying, gee, why, why do I keep doing this? And But for this one time, uh, I was glad to have him. So, all right. Well, if there's nothing else, then we will just call this a quick presentation uh, and the replay will be available anytime you want. And uh, there'll be a, um, a link sent to you just in case you, uh, you don't know how to get to it. But um, anyway, enjoy and consider um, picking my brain and also consider uh, being part of my advocacy group. And if you just want to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with me, just click on the book time with Jean and we can have a, we can have a discussion. So thanks everybody. You have a great day.